both my parents were really community oriented people and activists. So I always, my, my work has always been community based. Um, so I've always felt a need to put my work in the community and I thrive off of stories. Different community, marginalized communities of women, uh, different people of color, uh, LGBT communities have been really important to my work. And I find that Buffalo is a space that you can really channel that no matter where you are. If that's a site specific work because I am in dance, it tends to live in a theater, in a theatrical kind of a space. But Buffalo really, in the summers, is great because you just go to any festival and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna go in the middle of the street <laughs> and I'm gonna dance and see if a bunch of people will gather around me. And they do, and then I kind of pick up on different people's uh, energies and movements and then I kind of create my work. The MFA program here at UB has allowed me to do is to take kind of this academic jargon and this like this the space of the academy that people don't really know unless you're like this intellectual and bring it to the community. So I'll, I'll take a lot of things that I learned and then I put it in this um, kind of performance presentational space and so I will I'll take uh, a lot of seminar work that I've learned, a lot of different theories, and present it in a way that is uh, uh, obtainable for a lot of students and, and people that are not, are not privy to the academy. And I take the language and simplify it in terms that and it gets people thinking on a level that's just as intellectual, um, but doesn't have to have like $500 words <laughs> to it. And it's a nice bridge between the academy, scholarship, practice, art, and community. So it's interesting because growing up, Buffalo was always really segregated. So I had to find myself in different spaces all the time. Um, and for some reason, art was the only thing to ever bring people together. I think that's what's important is how do you get people to see differently? And, what, and, and how do you get them to value what they, what they haven't valued before? And I think that getting women on a platform say, no, we have to have women, and, and having some of those people that have power to say, no, we have to have women. I think if, if you keep pushing like folks in these big institutions to do that, then they don't have a choice but to change. They don't have a choice but to accept more students. Ago. They don't have a choice but to have women kind of be at the forefront of a lot of their work. Like we've seen straight white men for a really long time succeed and they will still always succeed because that's the system that is there. But also we have other people that can thrive and work on those high levels as well. But I do think it starts with a lot of the students. They have to know that they're able to do that too. Like we can't, um, I don't think we can any longer allow for students to only see straight white men as this like, this is the, this is the exception. Um, if they can see women, like what, how great would it be to have a boy say, oh, I wanna be just like this female artist, cause she's awesome. The idea for me is make a surface that is so beautiful that you wouldn't want to do anything to it. And then that's when I do something to it. So when you think you're attracted to something, it's really being attracted to yourself again. It's usually something that's familiar that you like, not something that's different that you like. Well, there's a lot of things that are great about being an artist here. And the word that I always describe to people is the neutrality of it. Because although I love New York and lived in New York for 15 years, there's nothing neutral about New York. It's either giving you too much or taking too much. And it's just always at the top of the scale of goodness and badness. And Buffalo really just is honestly neutral. It really is a pretty Zen thing where you can be in your head, which I am a lot, thinking about my work and letting things just influence me. And you can only do that in a neutral state in a place that's like this. Well, we come to your studio and every surface is covered with <laughs> doodles and drawings. I know you do them on the telephone. You're doodling pretty much all the time. If that's your, that's your go-to. Some people might be phone games or something. Yeah, I wish I could make paintings this good. These, like, there's so many great ones, and it's because I'm not thinking. I'm talking to a friend, or, you know, talking to my mother, 
and it's a little bit of, I can tell when my kids are on their computers and not really talking to me when we're on the phone together. So I'm doing it too, but I'm just using a pencil. The contemporary art scene, I think from what I've been able to make out, is 80% fueled by UB. Um, and I didn't know that back in the day because I wasn't, I wasn't connected with UB, but now when you go to shows and really I would say some of the top artists here are connected with UB. So when I got the fellowship to teach and to go to school there, I started seeing like, oh, there's this, it's almost like a whole nother city and just people from all kinds of other universities and countries and um, I felt really privileged to be at my age and everything, going back to school and sitting in a classroom. It just was really a great, great honor and privilege to do it. You know, I'm, I'm kind of like an untrained artist who's had training because the way I, my logic is to go about things in a certain way that I think isn't what you would teach in a formal art school. I'm interested in the grains of the images and how media gives tactical quality to, to an image and how it brings like different layers of meaning um, into that uh, context. And I think this is like very uh, political and sort of feminist act because um, when you rework the images and bring another version and account of these historical material, so you add to kind of solid, imposed, and dominant account of uh, history or anything that was established or registered. I work with the archive, and uh, archival materials play an important role in my work. I do a lot of field recordings and then I modify and edit the sounds that I record at various sites in the city uh, to incorporate them into my experimental creations. I feel um, that I can explore my own self through working with the city and uh, the city becomes something that exists um, mutually in me through my experience. In the aspect of art, I think uh, the city is and the university is uh, welcoming like people with their own like differences, with their own concern, to be given a chance to talk and work, and in the chance of this artistic or cultural activity, they can come together. They can just find like uh, common objectives or concerns, like the love and passion for the city and work for it, which we did like for in, in Buffalo Documentary Project and we had really this um, um, positive and good energy that we got from the people of the city. So when you remember anything from your past, when you want, want to like identify yourself and find who you are, so you, your memory is always registered in a spatial um, forms. So you're always connected to um, these memories and imaginaries of the places, not, not looking back at the past to just feel like nostalgia for the past or like past places, but like a way of looking to future and building something new.
in the world in which we live, unfortunately, a lot of times creative professions and creative people don't have a space in society or feel like they might not have a space in society like a sort of doctor or a lawyer would or maybe a more traditional profession or a more sort of mainstream, I work nine to five and I go home. Um, I, I think that, that maybe that Scariness is what makes it so beautiful though. I mean, it's it's in a lot of ways, you have to figure a lot of things out and you're going to have to do a lot more thinking about where you want to be and how you want to get there than someone that works a nine to five job and goes home. But that's not a bad thing. I think that that, like you said, it, it really, it makes it easier and more fun and more fulfilling and all of those things to create a life for yourself that you want rather than fit into something that someone else has created or something that you think you should be. The musical community here, I think, it is another big part of why I'm interested in new music and why I'm interested in contemporary music. We have a really good department in that sphere. We have a lot of really, really just, just crazy, crazy good composers, people that are here for PhDs that do works that are really provocative and ask a lot of questions and are also you know, f check a lot of different boxes. Some some composers here have music that's quite calm and quite contemplative, and some composers here have music that kind of makes you want to wear earplugs. And it's just a total, there's a huge bandwidth of a lot of different activity in that. And I've had the fortune of, of working with a lot of PhD students here on their pieces or collaborating with them in other ways that I don't think I would have gotten. And, and in another university. I think a lot of the beauty in being in the community, uh, being in the UB community and the Buffalo community is that it's just like, you're, it's a community where you can maybe make mistakes and d feel free to do a lot of experimentation. It's, it's a community where I feel at home making decisions to do things artistically that I 100% would not have if I were anywhere else.